an hour talks about extra time. Something for the weekend in the shape of big screen movies on the small screen in your front room. We do this each and every Friday and I really look forward to it. Van Connor joins us, top film critic and film expert. He picks three free view films for you. I pick three and we kind of meet in the middle. Good morning, Van, and how's your week been, mate? Good morning, Van Connor. Good morning to you as well, Mr. Ross. And do you know what? I'm, f- I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little soft this week. I'm feeling a little romantic. I, I feel like I could do with being balanced out. I feel like you could bring uh, something a bit more masculine to the table to compliment my feminine energy, I think. Well, I've got some good two-fisted recommendations, three films, and I think you've got three, I don't know if they're all rom-coms, but they're all a bit on the soft side. Do you want to start with, with Book Club, do you not? Now, this is on 4-7, the Freeview Channel, and it's 10 o'clock tonight. Diane Keaton's in this one, I think, isn't she? Uh, indeed. So it's Diane Keaton, Candice Bergen, uh, Ber- 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 Bergen, Mary Steenburgen, and Jane Fonda, and they are four um, older female friends. They've been friends for many years. They have a book club, as the, as the title cleverly suggests, and the book that they have settled on when this film begins is none other than Fifty Shades of Grey. I should mention this film is only about two or three years old. Ooh, I so the it. whole, yeah, the Fifty Shades of Grey thing was a bit old hat by the time they made this, and that is referenced within the film. The idea is that they read this book in their older years. They are awakened by certain impulses mentioned within said uh, said Blimey. text, okay. and it it sets them out on a, a journey of sexual comedic wonderment. The gimmick here, of course, being that you know these are older women with you know a whole different era of life to look forward to than the younger counterparts would. So we have divorced women, widowed women, women with marriages that have long since faded into, into sort of a rut. And it's it's the comedic hijinks that then ensue. I've got a clip for you of uh, the sort of sass that sort of exists in, in this group dynamic. OK, it's Book Club. It's 4-7, the channel, 10 p.m. tonight. Let's have a listen. This book made me realise that it's been quite a while since we, you know... As in... As in weeks? Mm, like maybe six. Six weeks? Months. Oh my God, I thought you guys were like rabbits. We are. If rabbits took a ton of Benadryl and made a chastity pact. Oh my God, we have to yeah. put a stop to this. Oh, yeah. come on. I mean, if women our age were meant to have sex, God wouldn't do what he does to our bodies. Oh, well, speak for yourself. Well, that was not God. That was Dr. Nazarian. <laughs> Okay, so it sounds funny, sounds grown up, but it's worth a look, I think. Now, I have got uh, something far more macho than that. It's a, it's a mad kind of romper stomper of a film. This, written by Quentin Tarantino, directed by one of my, and I know your favourites, Tony Scott, Wrigley's brother. Oh, yes. It's got a great cast. Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette, Val Kilmer's in it, Gary Oldman, Dennis Hopper, Brad Pitt, Christopher Walken, one of his great performances. It's True Romance from 1993, and it's basically, I suppose to sum it up, it's a comic book nerd who's played by um, Christian Slater, and his cool girl girlfriend, Patricia Arquette, they fall in love and when Clarence says to the girl's pimp, she's not going to do this anymore, there are problems, <laughs> there's a death, there's a suitcase full of cocaine, and there are loads of people on their trail. This is a fantastic film, though, is it not? I mean, it's full on, the language is fantastic, but some of the speeches in this are just, it's not for the easily offended, but some of the speeches, Van, are brilliant, aren't they? Oh, they really are. Like you say about the speeches, of course, the, so everyone has a favourite monologue from this. I think everyone usually settles on that great moment between uh, Crystal Walken and Dennis Hopper. There's oh, a great yes. sort of torture. Yeah, the, the Sicilian, the Sicilian speech, yeah. yes. Can't repeat it on no. radio for obvious reasons, but it's it's one of the all-timers. There's so many great moments in there. And you mentioned the cast. Do you know, I watched this about three or four times before I realised who Val Kilmer was in this movie. <laughs> I knew he was in it. Yeah. Uh, because he's always shown blurred in the background, I could never tell that that was him. It's a brilliant film. It's true romance. It's Sony Movies, 9pm tonight. Here's the trailer. From the director of Top Gun and Beverly Hills Cop 2. Yeah. A con man. Ask him if he got the letter. Did you get the letter? What letter? No time, Tom. We gotta go. A call girl. You call for a day? Huh? Ah! I'm out of here. She a four on fire or what? She seems very nice. What are you doing in LA, huh? And a suitcase full of trouble. My name is Vincent Cocotti. I work as consul for Mr. Blue Lou Boyle, the man your son stole from. Now, all that stands between them and their wildest dreams. Find out who this winging a prayer artist is and take him off at the neck. 
I mean, it is a great film. As soon as you hear Christopher Walken's voice, you're not going anywhere, are oh, you? Yeah. So that's uh, tonight. Oh, no. Sony movie is nine o'clock. It's True Romance, and from True Romance, sometimes True Romance leads to The Proposal, and it does in your case, does it not, Ben? <laughs> Tell us about The Proposal. It's another Ryan Reynolds movie you're inflicting on us, isn't it? Well, you know me. I can't resist a Ryan Reynolds movie. I, I love Ryan Reynolds. He's one of the all-round entertainers, I think, of our time. And I've, I've been a fan of this guy since he was a sitcom actor in the late nineties with uh, Two Guys, a Girl, and a Pizza Place, which I have a ridiculous soft spot for. And this is, I think this was his sort of breakthrough role. I mean, he'd been in big films before. He'd been in like Blade Trinity and uh, smaller hits like Waiting and Just Friends, things like that. But it really is the proposal in 2009 that put him opposite Sandra Bullock that really, I think, gave him the big platform. And the idea here is he is sort of, he's a sort of Alaskan Kennedy as he's pitched. And he works as a sort of lowly executive for a, a less than pleasant pub publishing tycoon played by by uh, Sandra Bullock, who is Canadian, and she discovers that she's going to be deported unless she can somehow arrange for her, you know, immediate American citizenship, and the way she arranges this is to basically strong-arm Ryan Reynolds into playing her husband, and he, they get investigated by the Department of Immigration, uh, they have, you know, an investigator hot on their trail, they have to go home to Alaska to visit his family as part of this ruse, and it's all about them getting to know each other on this journey. Incidentally, a little bit of a sidebar on this one. The proposal features as Ryan Reynolds' parents, Mary Steenburgen and Craig T. Nelson, who are also a married couple in the book club. So this circles back <laughs> as well. I've got a clip for you of them being questioned about their marriage and Ryan Reynolds' family. And this is Five Star, tomorrow night, 7.55, and it does not involve a suitcase full of cocaine and a dead pimp. It's the proposal. Listen to this. What, are your parents dead? Oh, no, his are, his no. are very much alive. Very, very much. much. They're, uh, well, you're going to tell them this weekend. Gammy's 90th birthday, and the whole family's coming together, and we thought it'd be a nice surprise. And where is this surprise going to take place? At uh, Andrew's parents' house. Where, where, where is that located again? Um, pff, why am I doing all the talking? Jump in. <laughs> Sitka. Sitka. Alaska. Alaska. You're going to go to Alaska this weekend? Yeah. Yes, yes. We are going to Alaska. Alaska. That's where... Uh, that's where my little, that's where my Andrew's from. I mean, I must say, Sandra Bullock elevates anything she's in, so that's got to be worth a look. So that's five star, tomorrow night, 7.55. I've got one of my favourite films. Didn't do huge business in this country. I first saw this in the 70s under the title Street Fighter. But it was known in the States, Van, as Hard Times, directed by Walter Hill, who'd written some films, including he oh, wrote yes. the adaptation of The Getaway for Sam Peckinpah, one of the great thrillers of all time. And it's basically about Charles Bont Bronson as a bare-knuckle boxer, hard as nails, looking incredible. He was in his 50s when he made this. He looks incredible. And he's boxing his way out of the Depression. So it's set in the 1930s. And, and James Coburn, who's always fantastic, is his kind of hustler manager. It made a lot of money at the time, but also there was tension on the set because Walter Hill on record as saying that James Coburn thought that Charles Bronson was getting way too much attention because, of course, he was then the bigger star. I would love to see the director's cut of this because they cut two hours down to 90 minutes. I don't know if the footage still exists. And what I love about this film is also said he wanted to shoot the fights like dances, and it's a fantastic film. This You must have seen the Hard Time Street Fighter, have you? I, I did indeed. I mean, I, uh, I looked into it, obviously, when you mentioned it because I, I hadn't thought about the film in a long, long time. And the thing that I had forgotten about this is the last time I saw this was when we were in university. I was actually, one of the films we studied. Um, this actually began life as a Western. I always found that really fascinating. Yeah. And when it was pitched as a contemporary film, Walter Hill was still adamant, look, this needs to be set in the past. This works so much better if it's set in the past than if it's set now. And although they sort of brought it sort of closer to modern times, they still kept it with that antique thing. But like you say about, about uh, Bronson's age, it is fascinating to me the shape that he is in, because he's 52 when he made this. That's scary. That's, you know, that's about, it's like Liam Neeson now kind of age. So it's got Strother Martin in it, and here's the trailer. It's called um, Fantastic Film Hard Times on Talking Pictures TV, one of our favourite channels. That's tomorrow night, 20 past 11. Here's the trailer. Money's hard to come by. How do you make money? I knock people down. You mean like a prize fighter? No, they're pickup fights. The money's made on bets. Funny way to make a living. Set something up for you next week. Go in slow, quiet. I got a good feel about this. I think it makes me real money. When I get enough change in my pocket, I'm gone. I got a husband in jail. No job. 
and no prospects. Do it. What the hell are you doing? I don't want no trouble. Just you pay your debts. Now I got the gun. I don't think you want to use it. That's one way. You want to see another? Now you say, I can see that as a Western, with him as a kind of itinerant gunslinger going around there. Brilliant film, so that's my uh, second recommendation. Tomorrow night, Saturday night, Talking Pictures TV, 20 past 11, and then 12 hours after that, 25 past 11 in the morning on ITV4, one of the big films from the 1970s, a cracking movie, yet reunites Robert Redford and Paul Newman, and with their director from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, George Roy Hill, who won an Oscar for this. In fact, this film, The Sting, won seven Oscars. It's about, as you know, Van, confidence tricksters, it's got Robert Shaw, in it as this terrifying baddie. It's based on the true life story of two brother con men who were called Gondorfs, which is Fred and Charles Gondorf, who were, which is the character name of Paul Newman. It's a fantastic film. This a huge hit at the time. It was even turned, I think, into a stage musical. They didn't make it to Broadway. I think you're going to tell me something about this thing, but let me give them the trailer first, Van. It's 25 past 11 in the morning, ITV4. It's The Sting. Chicago is the place to be in 1936. In those days, the big con was a dying art. Until a first-class grifter on the lamb from the FBI and a young gaffer from Joliet joined forces to con the big Mick. He's not as tough as he thinks. Neither are we. Paul Newman is Henry Gondorf. There wasn't a con he couldn't run. And there wasn't a sucker he couldn't gaff. Robert Redford is Johnny Hooker, a young grifter with plenty of moxie. Three grand on the red, Jimmy. But he's a sucker for Lady Luck. Tough luck, kid. And a sap for Lady Love. They've even made the trailer sound, period, DJ, another Depression-era film. <laughs> what, what, what's your background story on this one, then, Ben? I mean, it's an interesting film. First of all, it was sued not once but twice for plagiarism. I think because the, the con artist themes of it were kind of so broad. That at first, it was sued for ripping off, I think it was a novel from the early 40s called The Big Con. That was settled out of court. So there was, you know, some sort of credibility lent to that one. The other one was it was sued for borrowing from an episode of Maverick, the original James Garner Maverick. Wow. Well, in which he was the, the riverboat the, the the river gambler in that, wasn't it? They remade it as a film in Mel Gibson and exactly, James Garner. Yeah. Blimey. They did. Well, the, 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 the more interesting thing, I think, is, is as, you, as you've pointed out, this was found on a slush pile by, you know, a low-level coverage writer for a talent agency. The talent agent at the time was uh, Mike Medavoy, who went on to found Orion Pictures, I think something like ten years later. But the man who was, who was the coverage writer who found this script in the slush pile was none other than Rob Cohen, who would go on to direct The Fast and the Furious wow. and, and movies of, of that sort. Of a triple X and things like that, and he uh, he actually staked his own career on whether or not he said it was one of the uh, the great uh, the great American screenplays. And Mike Medavoy basically bet him that if he was right and he could sell the script, then you know he'd he'd, he'd get you know the credit and all that. Um, if he couldn't, Cohen would have to leave the business. So in a sense. The Sting is literally directly responsible for the existence of the Fast and the Furious series. I mean, what's fantastic about this, for those who don't know, the slush pile is where kind of unsolicited screenplays get dumped. You know, it's like begging letters almost, isn't it? And he happened to just pass by Rob Cohen and think, this is worth a second glance. This is one of the greatest things I've ever read. It's an amazing story. So it's 11.25 a.m. Set your uh, video for it, uh, or your recorder for it, on ITV4 Sunday morning, or 11.30, rather. And you've got Sunday evening. Is this another rom-com, you softy van Connor? Take Table 19, what's this about? It's film four, and it's uh, seven, ten past seven on Sunday evening. Well, I've, I've given you rekindled older passion. I've given you, you know, a proposal. Now I'm going to take you to the wedding, but it's not quite the rom-com you think. This is more of a rom-dramedy, if you will. This stars Anna Kendrick. Uh, it stars Stephen Merchant, Tony Revolori, Craig Robinson, uh, Lisa Kudrow, Phoebe from Friends, June Squibb, Wyatt Russell. It's an all-star dramedy of sort of cable TV kind of performers and comedy comedy performers, and it comes from a script written by the Duplass brothers, who have something of a, a name for themselves in Mumblecore, and of course, I think it's, uh, it might be Jay Duplass, or one of the Duplasses has gone into acting in things like Bombshell and The Morning Show in, in recent years as well. The idea here is Anna Kendrick is a young woman who goes to a wedding at which the best man is her recent ex-boyfriend, and the bride-to-be is her former best friend slash his sister. So it comes with a certain level of 
complications. She's stuck at table 19, hence the, uh, hence the clever title, um, which is basically the loser tables, where they stick all the miscreants and the weirdos and the oddballs. Right. And they all sort of come together and support Anna Kendrick through this, what's obviously a rough experience from her. And it's about the f- sort of unlikely friendships that develop over the course of this one. I've got a clip for you of Anna Kendrick confronting her ex, Wyatt, son of Kurt and Goldie Russell. Film 4, 10 past 7, Sunday night. It's table 19. Nikki can calm down. What is, the, what is the deal with Nikki? Really? Wow. What's the deal with Nikki? That's funny. Why would you care about Nikki if you're just here for my sister? You're right. Yeah. You're right. It's none of my business if you cheated on me with her. What? Why should it even bother me? Come on. I didn't cheat on you with her. It started after we broke up and you dropped out as maid of honor. How does a guy who... After two years, you break up with me over text? Good luck with your future endeavors? Were you firing me? What the... F- <laughs> it does sound funny that I've not seen this one. So it's a recommendation of yours. Van, always an absolute pleasure, mate. You know, I know we can we can hear your musings on all the big film releases and stuff on the TV with Rebecca Perfect. Tell us about that and remind us about Two Minute Movies, if you would. Uh, you can find uh, Rebecca and I on Friday mornings on the off-screen show on podcast platforms where we go through, well, under the, uh, you know, the current coronavirus sort of circumstances, uh, you can find us going through all the new movies being released on digital, uh, weeks' worth of recommendations on Freeview, films that are on DVD, Blu-ray, and streaming as well. Basically, the, the full spread in one 45-minute package for you every week. We leave no stone unturned in your uh, couch-based entertainment for the week. You can also find me uh, hosting Two Minute Movies on podcast platforms, where this week I'm covering none other than the new Will Ferrell Netflix comedy Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga, best described as Blades of Glory at Eurovision. Uh, it's as bonkers as it sounds. I'm going to be listening to the Two Minute Movie download podcast, and I'm going to be watching the film this weekend. Van, always an absolute pleasure, mate. We'll meet again next Friday morning here on Talk on Talks by Extra Time. Me, Paul Ross and Van Connor, and I'm back after this.